one. Hi, folks. This is Kevin Knebel in beautiful Monument, Colorado, and I want to thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day today to participate in the Schweiky Media webinar series. I'm going to cover one of the one of the uh, features of LinkedIn, but before I do, why don't I just mention very quickly who I am? My name is Kevin Knebel. I'm an international speaker, author, trainer, and coach. I, uh, I live in Monument, Colorado, which is about 50 miles south of Denver, 20 miles north of Colorado Springs, but I don't spend a lot of time here. I happen to be here today, but I'm usually on the road somewhere in the U.S. or internationally on a weekly basis talking about how to blend old-school, high-touch networking relationship and sales skills with new-school, high-tech social media platforms such as LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, I've been blessed over the years to help my clients generate millions and millions of dollars and in increase revenue and open up all kinds of networking uh, client relationships and strategic alliances. So I'm going to cover for about 10 or 15 minutes LinkedIn profile optimization. And all social media platforms, including LinkedIn, are always in the constant redesign. It's just the nature of the platform. These things are constantly changing. So I've been working with Schweike now for a couple of years, and we recorded a video like this a year or two ago, but it's really time now for an update with some of the newer features available on LinkedIn. So right now we're looking at my LinkedIn homepage. And just so you know, I'm going to run through this live in real time. Um, I don't really teach this content by PowerPoint. I think the worst way to teach somebody how to ride a bike would be by showing them a bunch of PowerPoint slides on how to ride a bike. I think the best way to teach somebody how to ride a bike would be to put them on the bike. So I'm going to put you on the bike. So we're looking at my LinkedIn homepage right now. We're going to click on Profile, which will pull up my LinkedIn profile. Now, it's important for you to remember that in a more and more interconnected, over-caffeinated, hyper-competitive Mach 5 with your receding hairline on fire, Crackberry, Blackberry type world, your LinkedIn profile is basically your electronic digital business card. If you're old enough like I am to remember the word Rolodex, a Rolodex was a tool that you used to keep your business cards in. LinkedIn can be thought of as an electronic Rolodex. It's a million times more than that, but at its simple core, it's basically a Rolodex. And um, you want to make sure, just like our parents and grandparents told us many years ago, you want to make sure that you're always giving the right first impression. So you could be absolutely the best person in the world at what you do, but if someone looks at your LinkedIn profile and it doesn't look credible or professional, they have no choice but to think that you're not credible or professional because we always make a, a first impression, whether good or bad. So let me give you some tips on how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. Number one, you want a smiling headshot. You don't want a corporate logo. You don't want some goofy picture. You just want a nice smiling headshot. On your name, if you're a female, make sure you have your maiden name or maiden names in between your first and last name, and you'll see why in a few moments. In your headline, you have a hop up to 120 characters to explain who you are, what you do, and how that adds value to your clients or your employer. Most people typically only have their, their job title. Um, that's, that's a waste of space. Use your job title and then fill in the rest of the space with something that adds value. You can always go back and change it later. You're probably not going to have a smiley face like I do, but humor is part of my brand, so that, that makes sense for me, but it might not make sense for you. I'm just suggesting you use all the available space. Underneath your picture, you have what's called a public profile URL. I'm going to strongly suggest that you customize this to be your name. So if I go up here to where it says Profile and I click Edit Profile, it'll show that public profile URL again with the word Edit to the right of it. If I click on the word Edit, this will take me to another page where I can actually customize this feature. So give it a second to come up here. And when it comes up, if I scroll down here, I can customize my public profile URL. So I'm going to suggest you customize that to your name, not the random string of letters and, net and numbers that LinkedIn creates for you when you opened your LinkedIn profile, and you're going to set that. Then what I'm going to suggest you do is make sure that you add this tip, this normal um, People nowadays are used to seeing the IN, and that means LinkedIn, and the F means Facebook, and the little bird means Twitter. 
I'm going to suggest that you add this link to your email signature. So I'm not talking about um, your LinkedIn profile right this second. I'm talking about email. Make sure that you have a link in your email signature to your LinkedIn profile because we want everybody who ever gets an email from you to be able to click on that and see your LinkedIn profile because, again, your LinkedIn profile is your electronic digital business card. As we go down your profile, I've rearranged, well, before I get into that, let's cover contact info. I'm going to suggest that you include your phone number. You also include your mailing address, your business mailing address, and links to your Twitter account if you have one. And you have up to a total of three other links that you can add to your LinkedIn profile. So today you're on a very brief webinar, and I'm kind of shooting buckshot because there's a lot of people that are listening to this. But if you were a social selling and relationship marketing coaching client of mine, I could write you a very specific prescription based on your specific situation. and But because you're part of a larger webinar right now, I'm making broad generalizations. So understand your results may vary. Objects and mirror may be closer than they appear. Don't try this at home and all the other normal disclaimers. Some people would never think of putting their, their mailing address, and that's fine. All I'm suggesting is if you had a business address, it may serve you well to put that in your LinkedIn profile and your phone number and the links to your other platforms. I've rearranged the order in my LinkedIn profile by dragging my background to the top because I want people to see that I'm a normal guy. In addition to being an international speaker and author and hoo-ha and all that other stuff, I want people to see I'm just a normal guy. I like skiing, golfing, fishing. I love to gourmet cook. I love playing music. So I want them to see that. I give them, I give them my birth date, and I also give them my contact information again and I also have a very open and very welcoming message. I'm all about paying it forward, and I'd love for you to ask me to prove it. How may I serve you? Most people don't begin business relationships with that type of a conversation. I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody else. I'm just saying that over the last 20 years of doing this type of work, both online and offline, opening up conversations with some type of a benefit or a value to the person you're looking to connect with is quite different than what most people do. Most people are trying to figure out ways to either show how smart they are or make the conversation all about them. I reverse that and say, you know what, there's plenty of time to talk about me. How can I add value to you? So I have that at the top of my profile. Then you get into your summary. Your summary is where you have up to 2,000 available characters. That's a lot of real estate. So I'm going to suggest you use as much of the real estate, but understand that most people don't know that LinkedIn has search engine optimization functions built into its computer programs and algorithms. So if you were, let's say, a um, financial advisor, and you use the word financial advisor, and then you use the word financial advisor in another sentence, and you use the word financial advisor somewhere else, the more times you use that word, the higher you're going to rank in the search rankings when somebody goes to the top of the page on LinkedIn and types in financial advisor. So I want you to think of the top three, four, five keywords related to your expertise and related to the value that you deliver to your clients and use those words repeatedly in your LinkedIn profile in a non-obvious fashion, and you can actually, in real time, on your couch, in your fuzzy bunny slippers, determine how your search rankings actually show up. It's a very, very powerful tip. You can also add video. Most people have an iPhone or an Android. Nobody's going on LinkedIn to watch Avatar or Titanic, so I would only record maybe a 60 or a 90-second video but you can have a welcome video where you're actually saying, hi, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your busy day to look at my LinkedIn profile. Here's a little bit of information about how maybe I could add value to you. Or you're really only limited by your imagination as to some of the different things you could put in a 60 or 90 second video, including client testimonials, industry updates, or whatever it is you think could add value to people. If you're an author or if you've been a contributing author to a magazine or any type of publication, now LinkedIn also has this publication feature. I've, been a, uh, I've written a book for McGraw-Hill, and I, I'm a contributing author for a book with Wiley, so that's in my profile. That may or may not be applicable for you. 
People can obviously endorse your skills, and then you get into your experience. My simple recommendation on experience is it serves you well to put down all the things you've done since high school or college because you never know how somebody's going to read that and see your track record of adding value to clients and employers. So I would strongly encourage you to put down where you've worked, how long you've worked there, and then clearly articulate the value that you've added to the organizations of which that you've been uh, involved in. A couple of other new features when I hit the Edit Profile button. Give this a second to come up. You can also add projects now. You can also add courses that you've taken, patents, certifications, uh, causes that you volunteer for, test scores in different types of um, courses or schools that you've taken. So there's all kinds of things that LinkedIn is turning on on a regular basis to really showcase your credibility. And LinkedIn is becoming more and more and more a the de facto um, resume, and it's not even that you're looking for a job. It's just that with over 280 million LinkedIn users worldwide, people have really figured out, and I've been preaching this for the 10 years that I've been on LinkedIn. I got on LinkedIn within 60 days of the launch back in 2003. I've been doing this longer than anybody on earth. I've seen this really evolve over the years, and I made a prediction back then. I should have probably bought a lottery ticket, but I made a prediction that LinkedIn would effectively put companies like CareerBuilder and Monster and all these other companies pretty much out of business because when you have 280 million people and five new people per second logging on to LinkedIn and putting up their professional profile, background, credibility, it really becomes the world's largest electronic Rolodex. So those are just a couple of tips. Please understand that I deliver anything from short, hour-long to full-day boot camps on this subject. Obviously, in 15 minutes, we could only get so deep down the rabbit hole, but I wanted to make sure you had a couple of points that you could take away and use. If you go to kevinkenebel.com, this is me. So if you ever want to learn more about these different types of services and how to use social selling, relationship marketing in your business, your practice, your career, uh, you can subscribe to my free biweekly newsletter. You can watch my YouTube clips. You can follow me on LinkedIn. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And I'll end the webinar by saying, if I can ever help you in any way, I am more than happy to help you. And I would challenge you to make me prove it. If I could ever help you, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or send me an email. My email address is extremely simple. It's Kevin uh, at kevinkenebel.com. And I give you my word as a gentleman that I will be happy to help you. And thanks for taking a few minutes out of your busy day to participate in the Schweiky Media webinar series. I hope to see you on another one of these webinars soon.